back. Um, still need a haircut. I promise I'll get one done when I finish this because I'll be able to afford it by then. It's cost a fortune. But today's part is one of the last bits really. Uh, it's just the vacuum pipes and all those bits and pieces that go along with it. So we've got an absolute ton of vacuum piping. We have a bossed gauge with its sender thing and instructions. Don't know what that is. Uh, we also have in here. I mean, I'm probably not going to need this immediately, but we'll fit it on. Because uh, we're just going to run wastegate pressure to start with. But we have our four part boost solenoid Mac valve, which we need to fit. Um, it doesn't really have anywhere to mount it, but it might have. I mean, I might be able to fit some temporary brackets called cable ties through there, and that would be perfect. I'm pretty sure of it. But it doesn't even come with like a mounting plate. I'll have to get one made, like a little bracket for it. So we've got that to do, and then we've got this here, which is what we're going to use. It's a vacuum manifold. So what we get here is we get big piping, which will come from the inlet manifold, and then it splits it into all the outputs that we need. And um, we don't need many uh, because this here is self-control. So you've got your turbo feeds in one side that goes to the lower part of the wastegate, comes back out the top part of the wastegate, and then that one there just vents to the atmosphere. So that's, that's straightforward, self-contained pipes for that sorted so out of this we need piping off the manifold and um, then we've got one pipe will do the fuel pressure regulator uh, one will do the boost gauge and one will do the blow-off valve which leaves us three spare so we need to blank three of them off so that's dead easy now this needs to be mounted somewhere but conveniently when I was looking around the engine bay for space because I don't have much space left uh, I found out that these holes here pretty much line up with two of the original holes that held the battery tray in, which is what these bolts are here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drill through there to make that hole big enough so those bolts fit, and then that should bolt up. If it doesn't bolt up, what I'll do is I'll just elongate them slightly till it does line up, and then that's that sorted, hard bolt to the body. Awesome. Uh, next thing, I need to unscrew this here and try and work out if that there is the same thread as that there, which would then mean I can just screw the uh, sensor for the boost gauge straight into that. Don't have to worry about it, don't have to mount it anywhere else, just straight in there, plug straight on it. That would be a lot easier, which maybe look a little bit neater as well. Otherwise, I'll just run a vacuum pipe to it and uh, zip tie that up somewhere because um, temporary brackets are the future. So there we go, that's what I'll be doing this part, and then that's everything pretty much finished. Uh, I just need to get the laptop out and start adjusting things in the K-Pro to make it run. Cool. All right, so I'm waiting on the drill to charge to get through that. Typically battery flat, but this is gonna sit itself down there. Just gonna make it dead easy, because um, I've already ran the pipe, which is this one here, that goes out the inlet manifold. That just needs to go onto that end. So that's dead easy. And then I've got the three vacuum takeoffs coming up the way. One to the dump valve, that needs to be short. Uh, one to the fuel pressure regulator, doesn't even need too long either. And then one to go to the sensor which plugs into that. Again, doesn't need to be long. So we've got plenty of vacuum hose, so that's pretty cool. So I'm going to run these pipes a little bit long to start with. Just so I know I've got enough. Sweet. Temporary bracket. Um, now you need to wire this up to what was your EVAP sensor. You change the usage of this in your cable. So what I'm going to do here is, because it doesn't tell me which two ways go to where, I'm just going to chop that off. And then, because I've joined them there, I'll just handily tape them onto there for now. And then fix it at a later date when we know exactly where they need to be. Because it just doesn't tell you. Okay, so we've got, from the turbo, it needs to go to there. So that's a sharp vacuum. From the bottom one on that side, needs to go to the bottom one on the wastegate, which is in there. And then the top one needs to go to the top one on that side. And then that one there just vents to atmosphere. And that is that done. And um, that's all the vacuum lines done. Side, just need to wire the boost gauge up in the car. So that's all vac lines from our macro. I may 
may change the location of it yet, you don't know, but for now that's all right. Um, that's all the back lines done there. Now I'll just wire that up into there and leave them wires because, as I say, I'll sort them another day. Um, and then I need to nip up every single one of these, all these bits, all that bit, all these. Nip them up, I've nipped up the Mac valve already, so that's not a problem, that one. And then run to the boost gauge in the car. Cool. So we're all done with the vac lines in here. Um, that's wired up. Bit of guess where it goes. Now we can do this. That is the last thing to do. It's a long time ago today, many hours ago, I ran the wire through. Let's go to the boost gauge. One plug. And one set of wires. Um, I've got the instructions for them. I don't understand why there's four wires. One must be like an ECU out wire. I'll have a quick read of instructions anyway. But as per usual with the Honda, everything you do, you need to take your bloody gear stick out. It's ridiculous. So I do have a 14mm spanner in here. I should have. I may be sitting on it. I'm not sitting on it. I don't know where I've put that then. But there is one. So let's get this out first. Anyway, um, I've done quite a few videos on this. I won't bother doing one on this. But um, the boost gauge is going to end up there. Which is cool. Next to the air fuel. Starting by loosening your knob off. So that's that out. Uh, well, out. It doesn't need to be out. It just needs to be that far out. So I can feed this cable up its rear end. And then plug the gauge in there because you have to twiddle the little gold knobs on the back to make it fit. Um, and then we can read the instructions, I guess, because I don't know, I don't know what to find out what the extra wires do. Instruction manual stop. Read this before install or use. Well, I'm halfway through, so I'll maybe read half of it and then come back and read the other half. But let's get the gauge fired in and then we can start putting the dash back together anyway. Um, and then I'll probably read the instructions and realise I have to take it all back out again. It's uh, starting to get dark as well, so um, if I can get this done now, then I can go and have my tea. I mean, we're probably only going to see to five, but it does read to 35. So I've got 30 extra, which is, extra is always good, isn't it? Maybe, but yeah, that's cool, the match anyway. So we'll plug the wire in to the back chuck it all back together and then we can call it quits until next time when we need to start playing with the k-pro again and a laptop so i need to find a laptop because my macbook doesn't run k-pro typically so it turns out we just need the red and the black and the rest of them are all analogs and stuff for the am skynet which might take over the world so we'll ignore them and we'll just use the red and black because uh, we don't need anything else then operation in the leds and stuff happens and then we'll english us metric modes and i don't know yeah we'll have a look we'll, um, i'll wire it up and then we'll turn it on and we'll let it see what it does let's give it a test bat what does bat mean I've got a low battery. Must have, because that's flashing. Okay, well, that's all right. It has been sat for a while. Yeah, voltage problem with the battery. Yeah, it's drained. Um, I've had it. Had the boot open for like three weeks, probably. It's probably not helped. And all the doors open for ages and all sorts. So, yeah, it's drained. But that's easy enough. Just uh, get the jump leads out. Give it a quick jump. Problem solved. But uh, it does work, because it lit up. So that's good. It means I can put all the centre console back together. And then we can get ready to, where are we going? I've taken them out and get ready to do that. And turn it, see what happens. But uh, we need the K-Pro for that and we need a lap, yeah, we've got K-Pro, sorry. We need a laptop for that and we need to adjust stuff in K-Pro first. So let's put this back together and then we can go and have tea and worry about that another day. Awesome, thanks for watching. So there's the vac pipes done and the boost cage done and the boost on my done. Um, and let's price this one up. So vac pipe, um, I bought five meters of it. I actually bought ten meters. Sorry, um, bought six mil and I bought four mil. Uh, I needed four mil for the uh, fuel pressure regulator, um, but I didn't need very much of it. Probably didn't even need 
probably only need half a meter for that, probably not even that. Uh, but with nine pound for five meters, uh, I think the four mil was slightly cheaper. So it cost me 18 quid, but I probably didn't even use a fiver's worth. But so we'll, we'll say nine pound for five meters just to cover what it cost. Um, then there was the four part boost on the Mac one, uh, that was 80 pound. Uh, AM boost gauge, I don't know why I bought this, but it was 169.50. I know it matches the white band, but that's a ridiculous amount of money for it, it's just a boost gauge. Um, and then a vacuum manifold, which I think is a good thing to have, uh, £21.50. Um, that takes this total to 280 And that takes the rolling total to 3870. Um, I mean, I still have minor things left to do. We're talking like I've got, I need to make some inter intercooler brackets and I need to do something with the screamer pipe. Um, probably going to put my old bonnet on to start with and cut a hole in it but I actually want the screen pipe to go down the floor not to come out of the bonnet so I've bought some 44 mil exhaust pipe and we'll go and get that done at some point um, but obviously I can get the car to run first because I might as well try and start it up check for water leaks and oil leaks hopefully there's none there might be there probably will be but we'll see so that's pretty much everything covered that I've used and all the prices it's cost me right up to date, right to today. I don't expect it to cost me too much more. Obviously, mapping will cost me a bit, but we're going to try and do that ourselves to start with. Um, but yeah, so that's it. So in the next part, it will be starting up, I guess, and checking everything's right and adjusting the stuff on the Honda data and showing you what we're putting into that and what we're doing. So cool. Thanks for watching.